Today we're going to tie a fly called the EP Bay Anchovy. Uh, it's a great fly for snook, tarpon, uh, little tunas. The first thing we're going to do is start with the SC15 Gamagatsu hook in a size 1 knot. He only ties these in one size, size 1 knot. And we're going to start with some fine monofilament thread. You can either use Uni or Vivas brand. And we're just going to start here right at the bend of the hook. Now the first material we're going to work with is going to be some silver flashaboo. You're going to take half a dozen or so strands here, no more than six or eight. We're just going to trim those from a hank here. And I like to do this in two kind of separate parts. I like to tie in the tail first, then the body. I know Puglisi ties them all in in one shot, but it can be a little messy. So I'm just going to take my six or so strands of flashaboo here, and I'm just going to tie them in right there at the back, and trim out the, the butt ends. Now with this fly, you want the tail to be exactly an inch and a half long. So I just measure out with my ruler an inch and a half from the eye of the hook. And that's how long you want that tail to be. Now I'm going to take a few more strands of that same flashaboo and I'm going to wind it around the body of the fly here to kind of cover up my thread wraps and also give this fly kind of a lateral line. That's the idea that you're going for is the silver lateral line of the bait fish. So I'm just going to take that flashaboo and just tie it in right along the side of the hook. Then I'm just going to take my thread forward here with a few wraps to the eye. Then I'm just going to take that flash boo and create that lateral line just by wrapping the flash boo forward on the hook. That's all you need to do. And if you want, you can go back down to kind of even out some of the lumps and bumps and then work your way back forward. Then you can capture the flashaboo, several wraps of thread. And you can trim it out of there. Now we're ready for the rest of the material here. So I need to take my thread and I need to jump it back to the tail. So I'm just going to take two big spiraling wraps and get right back here to the back of the fly. Now we're ready for our EP fiber. Now we're going to tie this in minnow color today. You can tie it in chartreuse, olive, tan, uh, whatever color you want. Um, you don't want to use too much EP fiber. You can see there if I pull it tight it's probably a quarter of the diameter of a pencil. So you need to be careful not to use too much material. Now I'm going to measure out this material so that I have basically double what I need because we're going to fold it over um, backwards on the fly. So I just kind of measure out on my hook. So I'm going to basically tie it in at this point and it's going to reach back about an inch past that tail. So I just kind of roughly measure how much I'm going to need. It's really just an eyeball. You want to make sure you have enough, that you don't have too little. And for this fly, it's about half the length of an entire hank of EP fibers. Now we need to even out, or taper, I should say take out the evenness uh, of the butt ends of our EP fibers. So the way I do that is you just grab a hank and you grab the middle of it, and you just kind of pull out a few of the fibers and just kind of roughly taper it. 
That way it's not just a blunt cut. You have a little bit of a taper. Then you do the same thing here on the other side. Just kind of creating a slight little taper. You can also use a comb. So if your EP fibers start to get a little out of whack, you can just take a comb and just comb them out and that'll even out all the fibers. Now we're going to take this entire bundle here and we're going to tie it down in the halfway point. So I just take my bundle, lay it on my hook shank and I'm going to take a loose wrap of thread and a second loose wrap of thread and then I'm just going to even out those fibers all around the shank of the hook. So you kind of just roll them with your fingers until they're nice and spread out over the shank of the hook. Then I lay down two tight wraps with thread. Then you can take all those fibers and just push them backwards in an even manner so that they're all spread evenly around the hook. You kind of want it to envelop the entire hook. And then you can capture those fibers with a couple more tight wraps. Then I'm going to take my thread here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to take a drop of a little super glue. This is really what makes these flies so durable is the EP fiber and the super glue. And I'll take a couple more wraps just over that super glue. And then I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to spiral it forward a few wraps to our next tie in point. And then I'm going to repeat that step that I did with that EP fiber again. And I'm going to basically do that three times. Just evening out the, or I should say tapering my fibers again. A little bit more glue again, just a little bit. Then I'll take my thread forward again. Now I want to stop about three hook eye lengths away from the hook eye. So I don't want to go all the way forward. I need to stop just short of the eye, about three hook eye lengths away. That will give us enough room so that we can finish off the head of the fly. And I'm just getting another hank of EP fibers here ready to go. And just tapering the ends. This one got a little wild on me, so I'm just going to comb it out here to get all the fibers even. There we are. Once you have your taper and your fibers, 
We are ready to tie them in. Again, make sure you have that even. Well, let's try this one again. I didn't quite get enough EP fibers. You need to make sure you have just enough to where you can get all those fibers around the shank of the hook. If you can't cover that entire shank of the hook, then you probably didn't get a large enough little clump of EP fibers. But at the same time, you don't want to get too many. So it's kind of a fine balance between getting just enough and having too many. Let's try that again. A little bit more dense clump. Kind of roll them around the shank. Lay down a couple tight wraps. And then we can spread it all out push it all back. There we are. Now we're ready for the messy part. Um, the material we're going to use next is EP Sparkle. Now this is quite messy stuff, but it is very cool stuff. Uh, it really is supple. Um, it's really fine, basically shredded flashaboo. So I'm going to take my thread just a couple wraps forward. And I'm going to take a little generous clump of this EP sparkle here. take a little clump and I'm going to take a clump that's about two three inches long and I'm going to tie it in the same way that we tied in the EP fiber. The loose wrap and I'll spread that EP sparkle around, tighten up, and I'll fold it back over itself. Be prepared to get this all over your tying bench. It's really cool stuff, but very, very messy. Add a little drop of super glue. And then we'll do this once more to finish off the head. So then I'll advance my thread just in between where I just tied in and the hook eye, and I'll repeat that same same process. Make sure you get good coverage around the hook. A couple more tight wraps, and then push it all back and let it just wrap around the entire fly. And get 
that first wrap here to bite. Sometimes this mono thread doesn't want to cooperate with you. There we are. Now at this point, you can whip finish. We'll tie in a weed guard at the end, but I found that it's easiest to trim this fly without the weed guard. So I'll just kind of temporarily tie that off, and trim it out of there. And now we're ready to trim our fly. I pull it out of the vise here. Now we want this fly to be a total length of about two and a half inches and when you trim basically a fishy taper. So I'll go ahead and trim that and I'll show you what I come out with. So here's what I've ended up with after my trimming you want to make sure that you trim it nice and sparse. Uh, you don't want to leave it too bulky. Uh, if anything, mine might actually be a little bit too bulky, but I've had enough of the trimming for now, so I can always trim it later. Um, you can also bring your comb and scissors on the boat with you, and that way you can trim it to size when you're out there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is tie in the monofilament weed guard. So I'm just going to tie back in with my mono. I'm going to take a piece of 25 pound hard mono and I'm just going to tie it in. The first thing I'm going to do is just kind of fold it over, make a loop. I'm going to put the loop over the eye of the hook. I'm going to leave part of the loop poking out of the top of the fly. And I'm going to do several wraps around that mono. I'll even do one kind of around it. And I can pull that mono loop down. Then I'll do a few more wraps kind of around it, in front of it, behind it. I'm just kind of X wrapping around the entire thing. And this will really lock it into place. Then I can pull the mono down to the hook point and trim just past the hook point. then we can whip finish. And since mono is so slippery, I'll do a couple whip finishes. Oh, that one broke, that's why I do a couple. And I'll just hit it with some glue at the very end. Really glue it good. But before we do that, we need to make our eyes. And for this, I'm going to use some little EP plastic eyes in four and a half millimeter. Take a couple out of the package here. They're just little white eyes. And you need to trim off the little post. So I'll just get in here and come behind the eye, trim off the little post. I still leave a tiny little nub on the back of the post. That'll give the glue something to kind of grip to. Now I'm going to take a cauterizing tool in my bodkin and I'm just going to help lay the material down as I take my cauterizing tool. I'm just going to burn just a little hole you can see I've got a little hole made right well, let me point with the different tools it's kinda of hard for you to see there but I burned a little hole, hole right there and that'll be enough for my eyes to sit in and I'm just gonna do the same thing here on the other side Got to be careful not to make the holes too big. And you got to be real careful with your cauterizing tool that you don't leave it in one spot too long. You just have to basically 
touch it to burn a little hole. And now we can take some super glue. You can either use Zappa goo or some gel. And we're just going to drop a little bit of it down into that hole. And we can take our eyes and just slide them into place. And I'll kind of push it down with the back end of my bodkin into that hole. Making sure it's nice and secure before you move on to the other eye. There we are, one eye down. We'll move over here to the next one. drop him right down in there as well. This one's fighting me a little bit. I didn't cut my nub down quite as small as I needed to. I should probably fix it. Let's try it again here. You can see there I left, well, can't quite see, but I left too much of a nub on the back end of the eye. That's keeping it from really getting flush up against the back of the fly there. So we'll try again here. I'll just shave it down. There we go. And we'll put a little more glue in it. You need just a little bit of the plastic to help it seat, but not too much of it. Because if you don't have, or if you have too much, it won't sit flush to the body of the fly. There we go, that's much better. I just squeeze them together nice and tight. There we are. And that is a bay anchovy. Great little fly. I've used them successfully for small tarpon, snook, and we'll just finish off the head here with generous amount of super glue. And that is a finished little bay anchovy.